welcome back everyone it's me matt thank you so much for joining me today i've made videos in the past about tank destroyers you know dedicated armor that is purely not to you know engage infantry it is a heavy heavy duty weapon system beyond of a standard caliber gun uh, that can take out purely extreme heavy duty armor and i started thinking to myself what if there were weapon systems that weren't conventional munitions that could take out a tank from long long distance or infantry or anything for that matter uh, by just using sound now the main gun of the abrams that we're looking at today that 120 millimeter smoothbore is very very capable of knocking out just about any piece of armor that is on the modern battlefield today but even then it does have its limitations which is why we're seeing the 125 130 millimeter projectiles being pushed out there but i looked at a sort of a sci-fi side of things and we know that there's sound weapon technology out there it exists purely more so at a police kind of level um i've seen some you know uh, sound technology that's been used in korea uh, that is just sort of producing huge frequencies and sound capabilities to deafen people almost from long distances but what about tanks what if there was a upscaled high energy sound system that could be put either in parallel to the main gun of a tank or maybe used as an infantry deterrent but i think this is a really cool rhetorical situation of course to look at because of course we know we're not going to see high energy sound weapons coming out but let's see if we can start a heated comment war in the comment section below about sound weapons and the sci-fi capabilities of them in the future. But before we get started, I'd like to do a massive shout out and thank you to today's product video sponsor, Thodio, who produce a 50 caliber known as the A-Box Original Ammo Can Boombox Speaker System. Yes, it is a really unique and very professionally looking 50 caliber speaker system, which is Bluetooth and wireless for you to be able to stream your music wherever you are around the world, potentially on top of this Bradley as you're firing rounds downrange, maybe with some ACDC. And I really, really like this ammo can. Now, believe it or not, I actually made a very similar version um, of an ammo can in the past uh, using a 7.62 millimeter ammo can for myself. I just sort of retrofitted it, but I wanted something that's more professional looking. So I looked for the Thodio system and I uh, was actually able to get um, a product sent to me and I am absolutely loving using this system. It is very, very nice. It was developed and perfected of over 10 years of different feedback from thousands of different customers. These ammo cans are highly, highly regarded in terms of their sound quality and professional design they look incredible uh, of course who doesn't want to have a 50 caliber ammo can uh, punching out music when you're playing around uh, whether it be on tanks or just doing some garage work or yard work it's really really neat now of course it is a wireless bluetooth speaker so it has some really good 265 feet high definition bluetooth 5.0 receiver inside of there giving you absolutely no lossless um, you know effect to your music and it has really good high capacity battery packs giving you up to 26 hours on a single charge which is incredible and i've actually only been able to play music uh, having some drinks with friends uh, for about six or seven hours and had absolutely no issue with it running out of power because it doesn't have to be plugged in it has its own internal battery pack which is really really nice i'll tell you this right now this system punches out some severe sound if you want it to it does have a guitar input if you want to put it in there and also dual usb charge ports if you're just putting your phone beside it as well it does also have a mini jack aux input if you want to just sort of place direct into the aux jack which is really really nice it's been fully handmade in holland by veterans which is why i support this product wholeheartedly you know um, i don't support products unless i believe in them and having a veteran owned business like this is really really cool um i would thoroughly encourage you to go check out their website um i'll put it in the description box below there is free shipping free returns and a two-year warranty please go check out the website they've got some really really cool other speakers if you're not into the ammo can style and uh please let me know what you think of this speaker if you uh, come back to my channel in the future so let's get back into tank sci-fi mode. Now, the world of warfare is ever-evolving, and the development of new technology and weapons has always been at the forefront of military strategy, and actually at the forefront of something I do, obviously, with my channel, always looking at how that new development of military hardware is being done. And as we move further into the 21st century, there's been significant advances in the development of sound-based weaponry, which is surprising because we don't really look at it in the context of main battle tanks. These weapons use acoustic energy to cause destruction or incapacitate targets without actually causing any physical damage. This video will explore the concept of using sound-based weaponry as a primary armament for main battle tanks instead of conventional munitions. Now, there are many limitations of conventional MBT weaponry. Main battle tanks are some of the most advanced and powerful ground-based vehicles in the world to take out other armor. 
They're designed to be heavily armoured, highly mobile and possess formidable firepower. The primary weapon of the tank of course is its gun, which can carry a host of different ammunition, high explosive anti-tank, armoured piercing discarding sabo and fragmentation of course many other rounds out there but for the primary engagements it's going to be those. While tanks are currently the most powerful direct ground combat vehicle they face several limitations when it comes to these traditional munitions. The first limitation is the possibility of causing collateral damage. Traditional munitions are designed to destroy or damage the intended target, but their effects can be far reaching. The blast radius of a heat round, for instance, around troops or infantry dismounted, uh, is actually quite significant. And if you have civilians in the area and you're trying to engage a vehicle, building, whatever else it may be with a heat round, it can do huge amounts of damage to targets that you did not intend to engage. This applies the same for shrapnel from an HE frag round that can cause injury or death to non-combatants in the vicinity. Additionally, traditional munitions require the use of expensive rare elements such as tungsten or even depleted uranium in true combat environments, which can be costly and very difficult to produce, along with the ethical use of uranium, which is not really a great thing, which I've also done a video on, by the way, if you want to go check that out. Now, traditional munitions also have quite limited range, meaning that tanks must be within a certain distance of their target to be highly effective. Of course, that range is increasing with the larger caliber guns that are coming out today. Using sound-based weapons as an alternative could open up some opportunity. One potential solution to these limitations is to use this weapon, and these weapons use sound waves to disrupt or incapacitate targets without actually sending anything physically to the target. These weapons are actually currently being used though, as you see many footage out there of law enforcement and military personnel using the long range acoustic devices or LRADs and acoustic grenades that will exist of course just in flashbangs that can totally disorientate an infantryman that is hosting in a defensive standpoint in a building. Sound based weapons utilize acoustic energy to achieve the desired effect. This energy can take the form of a focused beam or widespread burst. Now you'll notice in this footage, this Abrams is in a tank table or a tank engagement where it's utilizing a multitude of its weapons, whether it be the main gun that it's firing coming out from that hull down position, or the coax that it's also firing now, along with the common weapon system with 50 caliber there, and alongside of that, the loader is even having a good sling at it with the GPMG or the M240 Bravo. So when we're looking at sound acoustic weapons, it doesn't have to be truly a main gun weapon system. It can be something more zeroed and specific to take on infantry engagements that could make someone go absolutely stir crazy not being able to know even where the target is because there's no flash, there's no explosion, there's no trace of where that engagement is coming from, but you are being deafened and your eardrums are about to explode or the brain is being affected by the particular sound waves or whatever kind of frequency is coming across to you or your troops. That must be absolutely agonizing and terrifying because you can't fight back at it if you can't see it. The resulting sound waves can cause disorientation, discomfort, and even in some cases, paralysis to the target. This effect is achieved through various means, including the use of infrared sound, ultrasound, and high frequency audible frequencies. One advantage of sound based weaponry over traditional munitions is their lack of that collateral damage, and they don't cause physical damage to buildings or infrastructure, making them ideal for use in, say, urban settings, which we're seeing primarily especially right now in Ukraine, where civilians are actually staying within the local populace instead of rounds being blasted through a building, high frequency, you know, sound waves coming through there. Maybe tell the civilians in there too, it's time for me to go. This does not feel comfortable and is reducing that collateral damage. Additionally, sound based weapons are not really limited highly by range in the same way traditional munitions are. Sound waves can travel very long distances without a huge loss of energy, allowing tanks to engage targets from a safer distance. Another advantage of sound based weaponry is its cost effectiveness. Unlike traditional munitions, sound based weapons do not require expensive rare elements to function. The devices themselves are relatively simple and inexpensive overall to produce, making them an attractive option for militaries looking to reduce their expenditures on weapons. However, you have to consider the amount of power that will be required for a main battle tank or an infantry supporting vehicle to capitalize on this kind of weapon. A lot of energy is going to be produced, therefore you're going to want an engine or a power pack that's able to produce high amounts of electricity to supply the frequency and necessity to actually engage something such as a main battle tank that is actually absorbing the sound waves and turning the crew inside absolutely stir crazy. 
Now this is where we touch more on the sci-fi side of things, because while sound-based weapons offer several advantages over traditional munitions, there are also potential drawbacks to consider. One of the main concerns truly is though the effectiveness of these weapons against heavily armoured targets such as tanks and armoured vehicles. While sound waves can cause disorientation and discomfort in human targets, it's unclear whether they would affect against heavily armoured vehicle machinery, crew members, or even technology that's inside of there. Another consideration is the potential for unintentional harm caused by the sound-based weapons to your own troops. There's nothing worse than you using one of these high-frequency systems and then potentially have the sound waves bust all over your troops as well, which is not a good time. There is a lot of, lot of studies been done on the effect of sound waves in sort of riot control training crowd, I guess control training or police use, but it's never really been fully estimated or understood how tanks and how armor can accept, you know, high frequency sound waves, things like this, in an environment where we're really amping up the system, you know, we're putting an LRAD on steroids, can it be turned into something that could take out the vehicles? And it's very difficult to tell uh, or to check that because to do so we would have to, you know, basically put crew members through uh, potential scenarios where they're going to be exposed to this kind of stuff, which we're never obviously going to do. We've all talked of the Ajax system that's had a number of issues, and that is actually a vibrational issue to the troops that were using it. I think there's a pretty big lawsuit actually on that right now. And it is possible that exposure to sounds-based weapons, of course, being just tested could cause long-term hearing damage and other health issues just to test this stuff. Finally, it's the ethical considerations you need to take into consideration when you use these kind of sound-based weapons. While they may be effective at incapacitating or disorientating human targets, the use of what such weapons could be actually used as violating international law regarding the use of non-lethal force. The deployment of sound-based weapons could also be seen as an escalation of force, potentially leading to unintended consequences when you're just wanting to potentially, you know, clear some civilian populace out of an area. Uh, the tank crew might be like, you know what, this could work. I could use this. This would clear out some civilians or clear out some insurgents out of these buildings at the same time. But ethically, that's not a good thing. You don't want civilians getting deafened uh, by you just trying to use this weapon to actually support them. You could actually do some real damage. So when we talk about the main gun systems being used uh, and using a f sort of high frequency system, I don't think it's ever going to happen. I think if there was the ability for it to be sort of zeroed in, you know, if you were lasing a target three or four kilometers away, and you've got the range to it, and you can turn on a switch that basically turns the crew of that vehicle stir crazy and deaf. That's that's a game changer, you know. And I'm sure there's many different defense mechanisms that could fight back against such technology, whether it be sort of sound proofing, etc. But that's just more cost, more difficulty. Um, it's hard to say what it would do to crew members, you know, what it would do to vehicles. But I think. If the tank crew member wanted a deterrent, the commander of the vehicle wanted a deterrent to infantry, this is definitely an option, right? You've got a crew uh, that wants a sort of 360 protection bubble uh, around his platoon of tanks or his tank alone. Uh, they could turn on this system. High frequency sound is being blasted all directions around this tank. Uh, if you're infantry, you know, up to two, three kilometers potentially away, you're going to be absolutely deafened by whatever system's being used, you know, the frequency or whatever, the, the sound wave that's coming towards you. It's kind of terrifying, you know, potentially going into a combat environment and being deafened. Now, of course, we would wear hear protection. There'd be ways of which the infantry can fight back too. But what if it was such an intense level of frequency or, or sort of sound effect that would just take you out if you weren't wearing your, your ear protection all the time. And that's not fun either because, you know, you need to be able to be communicating with your troops. We have radios that can be affected. It's it's really interesting. I'd love to see if there's more studies been done on this in the future, sort of high scale uh, vehicle or troop engagements with this kind of stuff. Really, really cool. So, of course, there's a lot of things to consider here. There's lots of advantages, disadvantages when we come to using traditional munitions. If we wanted to make a tank destroyer that truly is using a sound weapon, uh, I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime for sure. But there needs to be a lot further research to determine the effectiveness of sound-based weaponry against heavily armored targets. Of course, as well as the potential health risks associated with prolonged exposure or use of these systems, uh, and the ethical consideration also needs to be put into there. I do feel that ultimately the decision to adopt sound-based weaponry is going to come from, you know, um, the military need. Do we actually need this stuff? I think with anti-tank guided missiles and the 
you know, uh, fire and forget systems that we have nowadays, having that bubble that could be created of a sound frequency that kind of just keeps troops away uh, could be something to look into. I, I'm not a scientist. I certainly don't know enough about sound, and I know many of you are probably a lot smarter than me are screaming in the comments section right now saying, Matt, this is totally ridiculous. It's never going to happen. I know more about science and physics and sound than you ever will. <laughs> so be it. And that's why this is a rhetorical conversation. It's really just for fun. And I would love to see, uh, you know, a, a futuristic design that could be created uh, that could, you know, not only, you know, prevent conflict, but also um, you know, save lives, you know, maybe it's uh, taking uh, missiles out of the sky with high frequency sound waves, I don't know, <laughs> we're talking about, you know, like the Iron Dome, but with, you know, zeroized sound waves, I don't know. Um, of course, we've talked about laser weapons on my channel before as well, so you can go check out that video. And thank you again for joining me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Maybe you just think I'm crazy, and I, I would agree with you, I am. But I'd love to hear your input on this, this particular topic. Uh, thanks again for joining me. Click that little bell by the subscribe button if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future. Of course, uh, clicking that like button also really helps the algorithm, so I'd appreciate if you either hit the like or dislike button. It really helps. And uh, thank you again for joining me. Hope you have a wonderful day. Make sure you go check out that description box for all my links, including that 30 speaker. I'd love you to go check out their website. Thanks again for sending me the 30 speaker 30 and I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye.